This book, The Money Mind Tale, is going to be able to address those very things and have a conversation about it. Real talk like we always do. No harm, no foul, no judgment, but no whole bars. But we are breaking it down because it is time for us to get back in check of us doing the things that we deserve and desire to be. And you know, for me, that means that we are able to fulfill our original assignment. That is the assignment we agreed upon prior to being placed into our families, prior to having all the personal and, and professional and financial and social tragedies. Prior to that, prior to the elements, prior to the gray hair, prior to the extra weight, prior to the divorce, prior to everything, you agreed to have an assignment, which has meant that you were going to make a major contribution into the balance of this world. And that's what I do as a lifestyle alchemist of mindset and money mastery. I want to tap back into that original assignment so that we can get more, more peace and balance within this world, more, more contributing factors, and then you leave a legacy of the same thing. So with that being said, let me read from you a little bit, just a little bit of what this book says. It says, if you're unaware of where your money is, you can't build a relationship, no relationship, no money. You have to plan it, talk to it, give it instructions. You need to design a way for you to begin to get clarity. That means AKA an understanding without obstacles about the way the money functions in your life and impacts those around you. The money paradigm is one where you can see or not see where your money is and goes. See, a paradigm is a system of the beliefs, habits, and thoughts that become part of your subconscious mind. The mind that is easily influenced, the mind that accepts all things that you show, hear, touch, feel. How does a paradigm get created then? It, you think it, you believe it, attach an emotion to it, and then there's an action or non-action that is the result. But why do we think it? Why do we believe it? It's because of our early exposure and our overall environment and experiences that we've had over our lifetime thus far. You see, we're social people. And by being social, by the time we're three years old, because we're just absorbing and, and soaking in all these great things, we found a way for us to be able to know what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, what keeps us in the circle and what takes us out of the circle, who's with us and who's not. These paradigms, however, are not permanent. They can be changed and altered, and you must do so if you really, really, really want to make your money more money and change the tales that are spinning around in your head. All things, places, and people are temporary. We create the life we want to exist in. No longer will we continue to allow the stories to box us in, to limit us. We can change the paradigms the same way we formed them through repeated habits and exchange of different information. Clarity equals power. What do you want? More money, more peace, a long vacation, to be debt free, financial freedom, oh, could it be? Can you describe it then? While it seems possible and fun to imagine it, it's even better when you get a chance to have it. Financial freedom is not a choice. Excuse me, financial freedom is a choice, not a chance. Just saying it or wishing for it or dreaming about it or admiring somebody else doesn't bring it to reality. You have to create it. Changing and managing your thoughts and behaviors and revamping the money habits that you've taken on brings not only financial freedom, but financial stability. Throughout this book, you will hear a lot of terms and a lot of things that we often do because we say we don't have the money. But yet we, at the same voice, we say we deserve a better lifestyle. 
and we want to work hard. But isn't it better if we could work hard and become wealthy versus just going from paycheck to paycheck? Isn't it better to have financial stability when we'll be able to make five, six, seven, eight, ten figures and be able to do what it is we will want to do? Because financial stability will allow us to do what we are compelled to do and not feel obligated to do anything. We'll be able to work by choice, doing what we love. We'll be able to have money working for us versus working for it. We'll be able to give more, share more, be more, impact more, and leave a legacy of the same. Many of us have come from humble beginnings and from limited starts. And sometimes our expectations can be broken down by the serious and very real conditions and circumstances that we find ourselves in. Oftentimes, many of these are a result of generational or the legacy of experience of our parents and our loved ones. But now we have the ability to choose to do something different to transmute the beliefs and create new ones, to re-engage ourselves with new habits, new thoughts, new practices, new languages, and gain financial stability. Throughout this book, I will challenge you. I will challenge you in ways in which I've never even thought could be challenged. No one ever challenged me this way. I challenged myself first, and then I begin to see the results. So as we are sharing today throughout this book and throughout these pages, I invite you to open up a space that allows you to understand the power of a money mind story. All right. That's a little bit of what we're going to be doing. And then it goes on to talk about. Now, this book is very interactive in that it is going to uh, walk you through not only a conversation where you are um, buying into the process, you are learning more about some of the paradigms we have. Of course, we have more than just a money tale, but the money tale impacts us because a lot of times we say the reason we can't do things is because of the fact we don't have the money. So let's address that first. Let's address the mindset and the money and get it to where it wants to be. As I promised you, if you stay to the end and we have reached our 10 minute mark, and I want to invite you to do something for me. I want to invite you to watch your email starting on Saturday. Watch your email and you are going to receive an email that's going to give you a code that will allow you to purchase my book. Only purchase my book for one week for half price. And anyone that purchases the book, anyone that purchases the book and posts in the group, and the Choice Not Chance with Marrying a Fool group, you and your proof that you purchased the book. It could be a screenshot of your purchase. It could be the actual receipt. It could be the actual book, which is even better. So you won't have the book because the book doesn't come out till August. So basically, you're pre-ordering the book at 50% off. So, and I want you to tell a friend about it too, right? Because we are philanthropists, we are wealthy, we are able to share information in such a way that we don't worry about it going away because what we have is so good and it's so valuable and we're so good and so valuable that we can afford to let someone else know what we're doing because when we put our spin on it, it's going to benefit us the way it's supposed to benefit us. And when they put their spin on it, it's going to benefit them the way it's supposed to benefit them. But remember, 80% of the people never take action. So just so you know, but I know you're not going to be that 80%. So go ahead and thank you again for doing this. Watch your email for the upcoming opportunity. Share this video out with a friend that you think would benefit from knowing about me and about my books. And thank you for being part of my community, whether you are a neighbor, if you're a family member as a cousin, or you're a family member as an intimate family member, I greatly appreciate your presence being here with me. All right, everybody have a good day. Thanks for joining me. And remember you are your greatest asset.